Welcome Accounting Boffins, you with Ashraf Patel and the crew. Remember guys, we're doing revision of reconciliations, specifically creditors reconciliation. Okay, so now, if you look at this particular statement, have you ever thought about the relationship between a business and its creditor? And obviously, why do we need to do a reconciliation? I think the following slide will explain it in terms of our reconciliations. Number one, you have a debtor's reconciliation. What are we reconciling when we're doing a debtor's reconciliation? We are reconciling the debtor's control account with the debtor's list. It's an internal reconciliation. Then we are reconciling the bank reconciliation. What are we reconciling? Our bank account, as it appears in our ledger, with the statement that we are receiving from the bank. Third one, creditors reconciliation. Now remember in this one, you have two types of reconciliations. One, internal, where you're reconciling your creditors control account with your creditors list, right? It's internal. And then very, very important, where you are reconciling your creditors ledger account as it appears in our books, that means the business books, with the statement that we are receiving from our creditor. Okay, so those are the types of reconciliations that you could expect in an exam. Again, when dealing with debtors and creditors, you also look at the aspect of internal control, and we know that the idea of internal control is to safeguard the assets of a business. And then obviously the ethical considerations which needs to be in place because we have to, be, we have, we have to behave as ethical citizens, whether it be in a workplace or any other place in the country. We're going to focus on reconciling the creditor's ledger with the statement that we are re receiving from our creditor. In other words, we're looking at an external creditor's recall. Okay, so let's just get a bit of terminology right. Firstly, who's a debtor? A debtor is somebody who owes us money, the business. That means we sold to that person on credit. As a result, that person is our debtor. Who's a creditor? A creditor is somebody that we have purchased on credit from. It means the business owes that supplier. So that's your debtor and your creditor. So here we go. If you look at your debtor, it's the customer who owes the business money. And if you look at your creditor, it's the supplier that the business owes money to. Okay? In business, we keep a record of all credit transactions with suppliers by entering our information into the creditor's journal and the creditor's allowances journal. So therefore, your two journals that you basically deal with regarding creditors will be your creditor's journal to record credit purchases and your creditor's allowances journal to record any returns or allowances from our that we, goods that we have returned to our creditors. Your credit transactions are then posted from your journals to the personal accounts of the creditors in the creditor's ledger, right? The supplier is a creditor in the books of the business. Okay, what does this basically mean? It means that from these journals, you firstly post your general ledger where you keep your creditor's control account. Remember, that's one account with all your entries in, in it. But at the same time, we do what is called the triple entry the double entry in our general ledger, and a single entry in our creditor's ledger. And the creditor's ledger will give you individual accounts of your specific creditors. Okay. So therefore, you can see that in our documents, we're keeping a creditor's ledger, which has individual accounts 
for each specific creditor, and the supplier, your creditor, whom we owe money to, will send us a statement of the amount of money that's due to them. If you look at your financial records once again, the supplier keeps a record of all the transactions done with the business in the books of the supplier. The supplier sends a statement to the business showing its record of transactions. Now understand this here. You've got in your ledger a, an account for ABC traders, meaning you are owing money to ABC traders because of the credit transactions that you have entered into with them. Right. But at the same token, ABC traders will keep a record of the transactions that they have entered into with us. Clearly, you can see what will they then do at the end of the month, they will send us a statement indicating the amount of monies that are due to them. So understand the basis of this reconciliation. So this is what we call the supplier or the creditor's monthly statement. Okay, now, if you look, let's just change the perspective for you. From our perspective, right, we the business, we bought goods on credit, we owe money to the supplier. They are our creditors because we owe them money. But if we change the perspective now and say we the supplier, we'll say we have supplied goods to that business, therefore they are our debtor. Can you see that? So understand where and how it works. So every time you're going to debit something in your books, they're going to do the opposite entry, namely a credit. So that's why you will notice that our creditors ledger will show a credit balance, the amount due to our supplier, whereas the supplier will send you a statement with a debit balance indicating that you are owing money to them. Okay, so keep that in mind at all times, the relationship between us and our creditors. Again, we're saying that we the business, we owe money to the supplier. The supplier is what the money that we owe. The, again, let's look at this relationship very clearly. We're saying that we owe the supplier the money. Obviously, they are our creditors. But they, the supplier, what will they say? They'll say the business owes us money, and therefore the business is a debtor to the supplier. I think I, I've explained that for you. So, if you finally bring this down to, the, to the, the bottom line, what does it mean? It means that in our records, we have a, a creditor's ledger indicating A, B, C traders, meaning we're owing money to ABC traders. What is ABC Traders going to do? They're going to send us a statement saying that, listen here guys, you have bought goods from us on credit and as a result of the, of the credit transaction for the month, this is the amount of money that you owe us. Okay. The supplier's statement is sent to the business at the end of the month so that it can be compared to the books of the business, right? Clearly. So, when we finally bring the two together, what are we bringing together? The creditor's ledger, where we have the individual account of the creditor, and we compare it to the statement, this process is called a reconciliation, right? What does the word reconciliation mean? It means to bring together. We are reconciling. What are we reconciling? We are reconciling the balance as it appears in our books, in the creditor's ledger, with the statement that we are receiving from our creditor, and therefore we're going to reconcile and make sure that the two figures are the same. This means, therefore, that you will compare documents, 
you will find and resolve differences, right? This is the process of reconciliation. Now, why is there a difference? What, 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 what's causing the difference between the amount that you are saying you owe the creditor and the statement that you have received from them shows you a different figure. Why the difference? Simple. These differences could be between the statement and the creditor's ledger account due to one, outstanding invoices. Meaning that you have received, you, you, the, the, the last invoice that you, you have from, the, from your supplier is outstanding. Meaning you haven't entered it as yet. As a result, you've got the goods, it's in your business, but the invoice that had to be accompanying those goods, you haven't received it as yet. So it's regarded as an outstanding invoice. It would also be outstanding credit notes, right? You have returned some uh, stuff to your supplier. You've made the entries in your ledger. They haven't updated their records. As a result, a discrepancy. Also, outstanding payments. In what way? You've made an EFT payment on the 25th of the month, but the statement that you've received from your creditor is already dated the 20th, meaning your books have been updated because you've made the EFT payment. Obviously, they do not, they're not aware of the payment that was made on the 25th because they sent the statement out to you on the 20th of the month. Clearly, this would result in a difference between the amount that you have in your creditor's ledger as compared to the amount that the statement is reflecting. There could also be differences between the statement and the creditor's ledger due to discounts not recorded, right? Very simple. You've settled the account timelessly. You've recorded the discount. However, when you receive the statement from the supplier, you find that the, that the, the discount has not been processed. Or there could be errors, right? You've entered an, an invoice into the account of ABC traders, whereas actually that invoice was supposed to be entered in the accounts of CBD traders. Clearly an error that we have made and we need to correct. By the same token, our supplier could put an invoice incorrectly into our statement and obviously that's an error that they need to correct. So as a regard of, this it means this would be as a result of errors from either side, our side or the supplier's side. Then you have omissions, right? Omissions just means that it hasn't been entered, it's omitted, it's left out. So there could be a situation where a particular invoice was not captured by us. And as a result, we've received it, but because we've omitted it, it's resulting in a difference between the statement and the creditor's ledger account. Okay, so what, what's the process? At the end of the month, before the creditor is paid, we compare the creditor's statement with the items in the creditor's ledger account. What do we do? We tick off all items which appear in both the creditor's ledger as well as the creditor's statement, right? This is just the procedure for reconciliation. Then we circle the amounts on the creditor's statement that do not appear in the creditor's ledger account. Then you circle the amounts in the creditor's ledger that do not appear in the creditor's statement. Clearly you can see, what are we doing? We're comparing the one against the other in order to identify errors, omissions, or whatever else may be resulting in a discrepancy between the two, namely the creditor's ledger and the statement that we have received from our creditor. And then, obviously, we use the additional information to record the differences. Now, this is where we now actually do the reconciliation, where we say, right, these amounts are not appearing in our creditor's ledger. We find the additional information, update our creditor's ledger. Or, if the errors 
or discrepancies are appearing on the statement, that's when we draw up a creditor's reconciliation statement. Very important, a creditor's reconciliation statement is an extension of your statement. Remember, the statement that you are receiving from your creditor, obviously it's their records, you can't change their records, but you use the creditor statement and then make the necessary changes in order to reconcile your creditor's ledger with the statement that you are receiving from your creditor. And in this way, you are reconciling. What are you doing? You're bringing back the creditor's ledger, you're reconciling it with the creditor's statement in order to ensure that the two are the same. So in this way here, what you've done is, after the errors and omissions have been sorted out, these two figures should now be the same. You should be able to say, you have reconciled, you have drawn up a creditor's reconciliation, where you, whereby you've reconciled your creditor's ledger, as it appears in our records, with the statement that we have received from our creditors. Okay, so that's basically the procedure and processes that we need to put in place when we are drawing up a creditor's reconciliation statement. I'm sure you want to know more and see how do we actually deal with particular discrepancies. If you want to know more, the place to be is with us. Let's take a quick break and we'll see you just now. Welcome back, accounting boffins. All right, what are we busy with? Reconciliations. Which reconciliation are we doing? We're doing the creditor's reconciliation. Which one? Because remember, in the creditor's reconciliation, you have two. One is the internal one, right? What does that one entail? We are reconciling, if we are doing the internal one, you are reconciling your creditor's control account with your creditor's list. It's an internal creditor's recon, right? So this means that you have your creditor's control in your general ledger, right? And you have a creditor's ledger with individual creditors, right? So this is what you're reconciling. Your creditor's control account with your creditor's list. Then you get the external one where you are reconciling what are you reconciling here? Your creditor's ledger account with the creditor's statement that you are receiving. Okay, so this clearly indicates to you that if we're looking at our reconciliation process, this is the external one. What do we mean by the external one? We're reconciling the creditor's ledger where we have an account for a particular creditor with the statement that we are receiving from that creditor. So clearly you must understand which reconciliation process are you doing. Okay, then, so this is the one that we're referring to, where the creditor's ledger account, the specific creditors are listed, and obviously this means that if you have five creditors, then actually you're going to be doing five creditors' recons. Why? You need a reconciliation for each creditor because you're going to be receiving statements from five creditors and then therefore you will then reconcile each one with the statement that you are receiving. Okay, so let's look at a question now and it says here, let do traders buys goods on credit from Anami suppliers. The information relates to August 2020. Okay, firstly identify who are we, right? We are Ladu traders. Who are we buying from? We are buying from Anami suppliers. So that's our creditor. Okay, once you've ascertained that, now you look at the next part of the question. 
The question says, use a table to indicate how the balances will change when preparing the creditor's reconciliation. Again, the next question that you ask yourself is, what reconciliation are you preparing? An external recon whereby you're reconciling the statement that you are receiving from your creditor with the creditor's account as it appears in your ledger. And it says here, indicate figures as well as a plus for increase and a minus for a decrease. Okay, that's the instruction of the question. It says here, the account of Anami suppliers, that's our creditor, in our creditor's ledger, we are Ladu traders, on the 31st of August, according to our records, we are owing them an amount of 95,160. Credit indicating it's a creditor. However, if you look at their records, what are they saying? The statement from Anami suppliers on the 25th of August, 2020, says that we owe them an amount of 143,460, but notice it shows you a debit balance. Okay, now this is important, guys. Our books has a credit balance because it's a creditor, but their books will have a debit balance because they will say that Lidu Traders owes us money, so we become their debtors. We saying we owe money to Anami. Uh, suppliers and therefore they are our creditors. Can you see why? Our books indicates a credit balance and their books indicates a debit balance. If you understand that, I promise you half your battle is won. Okay, now what are the challenges? An invoice of 26,000 Rand received from Anami suppliers was recorded correctly by Ladu traders. The statement reflects it as 20,600. Okay, firstly ascertain the fact. In accounting guys, you, you are allowed to be mad. Talk to yourself and say, right, who has made the error? Watch. It's correct in the books, in our books, in Ladu Traders' books. However, the statement, which is from Anami suppliers, shows us at 20,600. What's the difference? Let's look at the difference and see here. Clearly, you can see that the correct amount was 26,000. They reflected it as 20,600. That means they reflected an amount too little, right? The correct amount was how much? 26,000. There we go. They reflected it as 20,600. Clearly you can see there was an amount that was short on the side of the statement, an amount of 5,400. Where did we get the 5,400 from? If you take your 26,000 minus your 20,600. Clearly. So they have undercast the invoice and entered it on their side as 20,600, whereas it should have been entered as 26,000 Rand. So clearly the error, number one, is made by the supplier. So where do we correct it? In the statement. And what do we do? We add an amount of 5,400 because they have undercasted the invoice. They've made an entry with, too, with, uh, with amount too little, as a result of which we now make an entry with the difference. Okay, so number one, is sorted. Let's go to number two. Let the traders had correctly recorded a discount of 820 for an early payment. This did not appear on the statement from Anami suppliers. Right, step number one, identify. Who has made the error? We correctly recorded the, the discount in our books. They have not reflected the discount on their side indicating the statement has an error and needs to be corrected. Let's do that. So here we go. There's my, there's my uh, number two. There was a discount of 820 Rand. Obviously, 
A discount would mean that we are owing them less. So, because they have omitted to, de to, to deduct the discount, we now go in and we reduce the amount that's due to them by taking off the discount of 820 Rand. Okay, so that was number two. That was error number two, or discrepancy number two, that we have now sorted out. The next one, we have, the statement reflects interest of 1,240 on an overdue balance, right? Anami suppliers acknowledged that that was an error that they had made. So, what happens here? They have included in our statement an interest charge of 1,240. Clearly, they've said that this is an error. They've acknowledged that that error has been made. So, obviously, we now need to correct it. Firstly, where's the, where's the error? The error is in the statement. What have they done? They've charged us interest of 1,240, which must now be deducted. As you can see, we don't owe them that interest because they've acknowledged the error and therefore it needs to be subtracted. So there's discrepancy number three in where in the statement as a result of which we now reduce the statement by 1,240 because that amount is not due to them. They've acknowledged their error. Next one. A debit note for 1,520 issued to Amenda Limited was incorrectly recorded in the account of Anami suppliers by Ladu traders. Okay, now, important guys, RTFQ, read the full question. Who's made the mistake? We have. What have we done? Let's look at it again. A debit note right, issued to Amanda Limited was incorrectly recorded in the account of Anami suppliers by, by us, by Ladu traders. So, clearly you can see that we have made the error, right? So, the error is with us in the creditor's ledger. Okay, what have we done? Firstly, a debit note indicates that we have returned goods to the, the, the supplier. But in this case, it was returned to Amanda suppliers. Check here. We returned goods to Amanda Limited. What did we do? We entered into the books of Anami suppliers incorrectly, meaning, therefore, that we reduced uh, Amani suppliers' account by 1,520. As a result of which, we now have to say incorrect error made on our side. How are we going to fix it? by increasing the amount that we took off incorrectly, right? If these goods were in fact returned to Anami uh, suppliers, then definitely this entry would be correct. But the fact that we returned the goods to Amanda Limited, meaning that was another creditor, so it went to the wrong creditor's account. Who made the mistake? Who made the error? We did. What are we going to do? Correct it in our records. That means fix up the, the creditor's ledger and how do we do that? By adding an amount of 1,520 which we incorrectly subtracted in the first place. Right, next one. A credit note for 2,440 received from Anami suppliers for goods returned was incorrectly recorded as an invoice by Ladu traders. Once again, first question that you ask yourself, who has made the error? Right, what happened here? They've acknowledged a return of goods by issuing a credit note. There we go. How much? 2,440. We've received the credit note, but what did we do? We then recorded that credit note as an invoice, okay? So clearly you can see that if we're looking at uh, the, the 2,440 year, watch what happened. We recorded 
it as an invoice, meaning we increased the amount, whereas it was to be an amount that had to be deducted in the first place. So the question arises now, if we just subtract minus 2440, just the one component, are we then solving the problem? Certainly not. Why not? Because if we only enter the amount once, the 2,440, we're basically cancelling out the error. But we also have to record the credit note that we have received. And therefore, you can see that this amount has to be doubled. And there we go. It's your 2,440 plus your 2,440. Added together will give you an amount of 4,880. In this way here, you can see we're reducing the amount that we owe to uh, an army suppliers with the amount of 4,880. Right, next one. An invoice of 47,500 was reflected on the statement from Anami suppliers, but was not recorded by Laddu traders. Clearly, the error is on our side. We have not reflected this invoice, and therefore, we now need to reflect it. Therefore, coming to number six, we say, add 4,000, uh, sorry, add 47,500, which is the amount that it was an invoice that we had omitted to record, we now record it. Okay, next one. A payment of 7,500 by Lindu Traders on the 27th of August was recorded in the creditor's ledger account. Now watch, this was on the 27th of August. However, if you look back at the information here, you will find that you have, let's just get this date here so you can see what we, yeah, the statement date was the 25th of August. So clearly, this amount will not be reflected on the statement, and therefore, we now have to correct it. Here we go. Here we are. Can you see? A payment of 7,500 made on the 27th of August. As a result, it's not appearing on the statement. Therefore, we now go into our statement and we say, fine, minus the 7,500. This was for that payment which we have made, which is not reflected on the statement, obviously because of a timing difference. You've received the statement on the 25th, but you've made a payment thereafter on the 27th. Okay, what do we now do? Now we go through the process. Take your 143,460, add 5,400, minus 820, minus 1240, minus 75. What do you get? 139,300. Okay, take your statement, uh, your amount as per your creditor's ledger, take that opening balance, Add the 1520 minus 4880 plus 47,500. And what do you get? 139,300. What have we done here? This is the important part. What have we done? We have reconciled the statement which showed that we were owing an army suppliers an amount of 143,460. Right? According to our records, we were owing them 95,160. What have we done? We've reconciled the amount that both should reflect is an amount of 139,300. We have reconciled the statement from our creditor with our creditor's ledger as, it, as their account appears in our creditor's ledger. So guys, important. To summarize, make sure you identify who has made the error, then do the necessary entry to correct the error, and eventually you will find at the end of the month these two figures will reconcile. Okay? Well, let's take a quick break and we'll see you in a jiffy.
Welcome back, accounting boffins. What are we busy with? Creditors recon. Which one? We're dealing with the external creditors recon. What are we doing? We're reconciling, very important, watch this. We're reconciling the creditors ledger account, right? With what? With the statement that you are receiving. Now, an important consideration is that your creditors ledger will show a credit balance indicating a liability, but the statement that you are receiving will, in, will show you a debit balance. Why? Because obviously the supplier will be saying that we have a debtor, right? Okay, now, just to draw a parallel for you, this is the same with your bank recon, right? Have you ever considered that in your bank recon, if your account has a debit balance, the statement that you are receiving from the bank will indicate a credit balance. Why? You say you have money in the bank, the bank owes you money. The bank will say, yes, we owe you money, therefore a credit balance. Okay, so by the same token, when dealing with a creditor, the balance that appears in our books will be a credit balance indicating a liability, whereas the statement that you are receiving will indicate a debit balance indicating that you have a debtor. Okay, let's look at this question here. MZN Traders buys goods on credit from Styles suppliers. The information relates to July 2020. Okay, meaning therefore that we have a table to indicate how, to, how the balances will change when preparing the creditors reconciliation, indicate the figure as well as a plus um, uh, for an increase and a minus for a decrease. So, balance due to styles, to style suppliers, we are saying that we owe style suppliers an amount of 12,160. Can you see that that's appearing in our books in the creditors ledger? Right, what are they saying? They're saying no. According to our records, they're saying that they, that MZN Traders, that's us, owes whom? Style suppliers. According to their statement, they're saying, you're owing us an amount of 41,380. Once again, note the difference in the balances. So the credit balance, the credit balance is from your creditor's ledger, and the debit balance is from the statement that you are receiving, right? Understand, who are we? We are MZN traders, right? So in our books, we are MZN traders. In our books, we have an account there for styles suppliers, right? Who are we buying from? We are buying from style suppliers. They are our creditors, okay. Let's look at the first challenge that we have. A payment of 8,700 by MZN Traders was not recorded in the creditor's ledger account and does not appear on the bank statement either. Okay, interesting one. There was a payment that was made. It's not appearing in our books, neither is it appearing in the statement, meaning it has been left out in both the places. How are we going to correct this? Very simple. This is what we do, right? So the, the balances before the uh, errors and omissions, there's the amount that we're saying we're owing them. They say, no, you owe, owe us an amount of 41,380. There's the discrepancy. We need to reconcile that. So here's the payment. Take it off minus from our records. Take it off from their records minus 8,700. Why? Are we doing, why are we effecting the change in both? Because this has been left out in totality. Neither is it in our records, nor is it in the statement. As a result, we have to include it in both places. Right, now next one. A discount of 950 for an early payment was correctly recorded by MZN traders. This was not reflected 
in the statement. There we go. Simple. Go into my, uh, calc into my reconciliation. The error is where the discount was not reflected there. As a result, we now subtract the 950, which is the discount. We have recorded it. So ours is, is hunky-dory. No problem. The error is here in the statement, as a result of which we now subtract it, meaning we've sorted out the discrepancy. Next one. MZN traders recorded a debit note of 1,540 in the creditor's ledger account of style suppliers in error. This was for goods returned to another supplier. Right. First question you ask yourself. You've indicated that you have returned goods to style suppliers. And as a result, you've entered it into their account. But you return goods to somebody else, another supplier. Meaning that you have incorrectly made the transaction in the records of style suppliers in your creditor's ledger. We, the business, have made an error. Let's correct it. There we go. Can you see? Because we initially subtracted the amount, we now add it back. There's the 1,540. Where are we correcting it? In our books, in the creditor's ledger, we're adding an amount of 1,540, indicating that we took off the amount in error because it was, it was goods returned to, returned to another supplier, as a result of which we're now updating the records of style suppliers. And therefore, in, in their account, we must add back the 1,540. Next one. An invoice of 28,600 received from style suppliers was recorded correctly in the creditor's account. The statement of account reflected this invoice as 26,800. Okay, ascertain who has made the error, right? Let's check. An invoice of 28,600 received from style suppliers recorded correctly in the creditor's ledger. Our books are correct. The statement of account reflected this invoice as 26,800. Clearly you can see the error is on the part of style suppliers. They undercharged on the invoice or they, invo they, added, they, 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 they added a lesser amount and the difference was the 1,800 which needs to be added to their account. Because by doing this now, notice, if you now add the 1,800, you're now making the two invoices amounts the same, which is correct, right? So therefore, the error was made by the supplier, their statement is incorrect, we therefore correct the statement. Next one. The statement of account showed an invoice for goods purchased 5,930. This transaction was not recorded in the books of MZN traders. Again, ask yourself the question, where is the error? Is the error in the creditor's ledger, our books, or is the error in the books of the supplier, namely the statement? Remember what we said, just to recap, a very important point to remember here, is that your creditor's recon is an extension of your statement. So it's what would then appear on next month's statement. So any errors that are made by the supplier on their statement will be corrected, obviously, in the statement column. Once again, coming back to the error, the statement of account showed an invoice that was purchased. This transaction was not recorded in the books of MZN traders, meaning that we did not include the invoice of 5,930, and therefore we correct our books by doing what? By adding the 5,930. Remember, it's appearing on the statement. It's not appearing in our books. Therefore, we update our books by making that entry of 5,930. Okay, next one. An invoice of 4,700 was incorrectly recorded as a payment by MZN 
traders. Once again, ask yourself the question, who has made the error? The error has been made by us. Therefore, we're going to have to correct it in our records. Now watch this here, very important. If you look at the amount, the amount was 4,700, right? We bought goods for 4,700, but we recorded it as a payment to them. Therefore, initially what we did was, initially what we did was, we said, fine, show that we paid them 4,700. Now watch this here very carefully, guys. You can't only make an entry with the 4,700. Reason? If you make a single entry of the 4,700, you're basically just canceling out your error. But because you had bought goods from them, you showed it as a payment, meaning you reduced the amount by 4,700. In fact, let me show it to you in another way, just to make, for it to make more sense to you. Here's your creditor, right? If you showed that you had paid, it says you, you had paid them, so you were supposed to put in 4,700 on the credit side initially. What did you do? You put in an amount of 4,700 on the debit side. Can you see? So if you just basically make one error, you're just canceling out the 4,700. What do you have to actually have to do? You have to double the amount to get the correct amount of 9,400, as a result of which, you now can see that you must increase that amount by 4,700 times two, which is the 9,400. It will now have the effect of showing you that we had actually purchased goods to the value of 4,700 from our supplier. Right, next one. A debit balance of 2925 for repairs to a photocopier was transferred from the account of sales suppliers in the debtor's ledger to the account in the creditor's ledger. This transaction was not recorded by style suppliers. Clearly, it is something that they have to record, and you can see. Let's just take this one step back. If you're transferring, watch, a, a debit balance of 2925, right? So your debtor's ledger, a 2925 debit, so, if you're transferring it to the credit risk control, watch what we're doing. We're saying, debtor's ledger, credit 2925, credit risk control, debit 2925. This entry here, if we now show it, there you can see minus 2925 from the accounts of the supplier. Once again, watch, you're debiting your credit risk control. There we go. And by debiting the creditors control, you are actually decreasing it in terms of the amount that's due to the creditor. Therefore, the 2925. Okay, next one. A payment of 10,275 uh, 10, made on the 29th by MZ and traders was not reflected on the statement. Clearly, that this amount of 10. 275 payment was not reflected, obviously, as a result of a timing difference. You can see the time factor, and that would result in us now decreasing the statement amount by an amount of 10,275. And what happens? There we go. After we reconcile all our entries in our records, all the challenges in terms of the statement would result in the two accounts, have the two uh, the, 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 two, the, the creditor's ledger account, as well as the statement now reflecting an amount of 20,330, which is post the reconciliation, we have reconciled the creditor's ledger account with the creditor's statement. Okay, guys, summary. Whenever you're drawing, drawing up a reconciliation between your creditor's ledger and your creditor's statement, step number one, ask yourself, where has the error or omission not, or, or rather, let, let's, let's, let's change the question. Ask yourself the question, where is the error? Is it in my creditor's ledger or is it in my statement? Where is the omission? Do it in the necessary column and then you will see when you've done all the omissions and or errors, 
you will then reconcile your creditor's ledger account with your creditor's statement. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We're going to practice, practice, practice. Mass state, so then you will know exactly how to draw up a, a reconciliation. But remember, this is the external recon, where you're reconciling your creditor's ledger account with your creditor's statement. You must also be able to do a bank recon and also an internal creditor's recon, where we reconcile the creditor's control account with the creditor's list. And not forgetting the debtor's recon, where we reconcile the debtor's control account with our debtor's list. So recon, 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 all the time. Once you've reconciled, you are definitely an accounting shining star. Until the next time, be good.